Great day to you today. My name is Roger Williams. I'm the Big Pill. Just wanted to uh, jump on real quick and uh, talk about something that, you know, I've been checking out for a minute now. And it looks like, um, you know, it is noteworthy to uh, take a look and see what's really going on, what they're really saying. And it's surrounding the uh, connector video. Many of you have been on a presentation with us before, and we've had uh, the connector video uh, in play. And I just want you to um, take a listen to this. I'm going to commentate it as it goes, okay? So I'm going to be stopping it and um, uh, talking about it as it goes, okay? So here we go. Here's the connector video. Do you remember the moment you realized that the world had changed? First of all, have you realized that the world has changed? I mean, you know, I am spending time with my mother. Beautiful, wonderful, phenomenal woman, amazing woman. She, look, don't tell nobody, but I was inside her body for about nine months back in the day. Dude, what a, women. I applaud you, I honor you so much because you do that, but check it out. From the time I came out of that body, I began to be nurtured and admonished in the way I should go, the things of God and the creation that exists. I grew and was, you know, was taught. You know, I had a conversation with my mother today and I just reaffirmed with her that, look, our upbringing, Mine and my five siblings, we were brought up with two parents in the home. And I'm telling you, you know, I reminisced back at the time when we sat around the dinner table eating dinner very often, every day, every night. And the things that we went through as we were growing up and how the world was back then. I mean, black and white television, um, <laughs> AM radio. I mean, three or four channels on the TV, and it went off at night with uh, snow, uh, or we call it snow, uh, or the um, the little long tone with an Indian head symbol on it. Uh, it was just amazing. But look, the world has changed. Back in the day, we did certain things. You can't; those things don't exist anymore. So listen, I'm going to continue on. Let me tell you a quick little story that has nothing and everything to do with the future of our world and how you fit into it. In 1917, the United States faced a huge problem. They were working hard to compete in the industrialized economy, and there was a shortage. Not a shortage of oil or coal or other natural resources. A shortage of people, specifically obedient factory workers. The solution to this economic dilemma? It was an experiment of sorts. It hadn't been done before until someone thought of it. Mandatory public school. Wait one minute. Mandatory public schools. Did you hear that? It hadn't been done before. As a matter of fact, by the time I was of school age, the mandatory public schools, that experiment that they talked about was still going on. And I was entered into the public school system. And it was mandatory, like she said, that, you know, there weren't any people homeschooling at that point. You know, that whole homeschooling scenario had ceased. But before then, think about it. There were community schools, private schools, group schools. There were schools in the home. But they developed and designed a system of mandatory public schools. Why did they do that? And what was the result once they did it? What were they aiming for? What exactly were they shooting for when they did this? Listen. Listen very closely, and you're going to see. Unfortunately, the initial purpose of the United States public school system was not to inspire children or generate scholars. And it wasn't created for dreamers. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got to use the time best. Wait a minute on you. It was not to inspire children. It was not to uh, bring forth or develop dreamers. Really? 
So what was the mandatory public school system made for? Listen very closely. People who color outside the lines, break the rules, and challenge the status quo. The public school system of the early 1900s was invented to create a nation full of adults who would obediently do their jobs in the factory assembly lines. <laughs> oh, here we go. A nation full of adults, excuse me, a nation full of obedient adults who would do their jobs in the factories. And if you think back, if you look back on history, especially in the United States, what did we have going on? We had the factories, we had the industrial age. You know, when people got a job, they had jobs in like uh, steel mills and uh, wood mills and uh, factories, uh, sewing factories, um, widget factories. I mean, I mean, that's what they did. And all they did every single day, day in and day out, was the same mundane task. Put this bolt on this screw, screw it in three, four times, check it, put it in the box. Put this bolt on this screw, screw it in a few times, check it, put it in the box. Put this bolt on this screw, screw it in a few times, check it, and put it in the box. And they did that day in and day out. Now, is that the life of a dreamer? Is that the life of somebody that is inspired to think about inventions and think about witty things and things that they could accomplish in their life, excuse me? Is that what that is? No, it's not. And that's what they did, and that's what schools did for people. And guess what? It's still going on today. 1936, they did this. And then here it is, 2018, and it's still going on today. That's why we got in this society, you know, go to school, get an education. What kind of education you're getting? <laughs> the kind that they want you to get. Get good grades, graduate, and then get a job. That's where that life cycle came from. And look at the countless millions upon millions of people, billions of people that are doing just that. Okay, sure, everyone's not gonna be inventive like you know the Wright brothers who, who decided, you know, we're gonna fly, or like uh, Steve Jobs who decided, look, I want them to have a screen phone, a, a smartphone that you could tap on the screen and actually do things. Like uh, Bill Gates who said, I want to create software that can be on computers in households, and when there wasn't even computers in households. Really? I mean, or like Henry Ford, who said he wanted to create a, a vehicle where you can be transported instead of riding horses everywhere. I mean, think about invention. Think about the things that have come uh, forward in societies. Think about the things that people have introduced into your life that we're using today. You know, the, the laptop computer, the flat panel TV, the fan. Uh, the table. I mean, all these things came from people that invented these things. But look, are there that many inventors around anymore? Not really, because people are just not crossing that threshold to invent things these days. But let's continue on. It gets, it gets worse, but then it gets better. Listen. Teaching kids to sit in straight rows and scheduling the entire day with the ringing of bells wasn't by chance. Punishing those who didn't conform was purposeful. These were the skills they would need to join the labor force. Intentional or not, this early method of turning dreamers into workers was an investment in the nation's economic future. And it worked. Wait a minute, I think we missed this something. Then led Intentional or not, else wasn't by chance. Teaching kids to was invented to create Let's a nation a bit. people who color outside the lines break the rules, and challenge the status quo. The public school system of the early 1900s was invented to create a nation full of adults who would obediently do their jobs in the factory assembly lines. Teaching kids to sit in straight rows and scheduling the entire day with the ringing of bells wasn't by chance. Punishing those who didn't conform was purposeful. 
these were the skills they would need to join the labor force. Intentional or not, this early method of turning dreamers into workers was an investment in the nation's economic future. And it worked. They turned dreamers into workers. So I got to ask you, what are your dreams? Have you thought about them in a while? Have you looked at them? Have you even written them down? I mean, do you still dream? Is there anything in your life that you really aspire to do, aspire to achieve? Some great thing, maybe something that hasn't been done before. I mean, do you still look at life to the extent that you can contribute something great to society? Not even knowing how it's going to happen, but just knowing that it's necessary and you can do it. Do you dream? Well, if you're locked into the societal uh, life cycle of the education and then work, chances are you don't have a dream. That's why it's so challenging and difficult to grasp the concepts that are being introduced to you these days. I mean, a lot of people are, are not grasping it. They, they, they get introduced to something great, something different, something new, something that maybe they haven't been exposed to. And they, they say, well, no, I, I'm good. Really? I asked a lady yesterday, would you like to take a look at a way to earn income, make money, a, new, a different way to make money? And she said, no, I'm good. I said, wow, you're wealthy already. She said, no, I'm not. I said, well, you need this. Listen, people want wealth. People want riches. But in most cases, they don't think they can obtain it. They don't think it's for them. They don't think they have a shot, a chance. Why? Because they have been educated otherwise. And it worked. This then led to several generations of productive, fully employed workers. But it isn't working anymore. Why? Our economy has changed. We don't live in an industrialized economy anymore. We live in a connected economy. Right now, there are more users on Facebook than there were people on the planet 200 years ago. Technology has made it possible for us to connect with people, ideas, and information from anywhere in the world instantaneously. And as a result, our economies have expanded from localized towns and communities to the entire world. We have globalized trade in nearly every way. In the past, the obedient, do what you're told without question people were rewarded for working hard and putting their dreams aside in order to toe the line. Yeah, it's called uh, a watch, a pen, um, a retirement check. Talk about retirement checks, really? Okay, so you work and you make $10, 15 $20 an hour, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. You bring home half of that. And then when you retire after 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, <laughs> You get a meager, what, $100 a month, 200 500 maybe, if you're, if you're lucky. If you have a, a pension plan that, you know, was uh, backed by some union or something. But, I mean, you've got you've to have done that for about 20 years or so. If they have not pilfered it away or gambled it away. But look, the world has changed. The economy has changed. Keep listening. They were given well-paying jobs that led to long-term careers. They were guaranteed pensions, benefits, and the promise that they would always be taken care of. And they were. But that promise is gone for most of us today. That promise is gone for most of us today. Even those that bought into that promise, I mean, it's gone for them. I mean, I've had conversations with people who have uh, retirement checks coming in and pensions and such. And that amount of money is not, uh, does not a lifestyle provide. It does not. And then most people end up working until they die because they're not, they're not getting enough cash flowing into their life to even achieve the meager lifestyle 
that they can afford, it's time to dream again, folks. It's time to get on the bandwagon and live your life the way that you had intended in the beginning, when you had that spunk, when you had that drive. It's time to live again. Listen. Even if you have a white collar job, the majority of white collar workers are still working in a factory. Instead of operating a sewing machine or welding a widget, they now push pencils, type on keyboards, or process paperwork. It's still factory work because the entire focus of the day is spent on increasing productivity, which leaves little room for creativity, spontaneity, or individuality. So doing what you do based on the educational system and the pathway to the job, the work that you do, to earn income so that you can maintain that lifestyle, get an apartment, get a car, get a house, get a car, get a dog, get a spouse, get kids, uh, pay bills, go to work. Really? Uh-uh. That can't be all that there is. That can't be. I mean, what about positioning yourself in life so that you can help communities, help nations of people? I mean, help continents of folks to establish great things in their life. I mean, to fulfill a need, you're going to need a dream. You're going to need a lot of money. Yes, you will. And there's a way to do it. But the way that education teaches, that's not the way it's going to happen. Guaranteed it's not. Keep watching. The educated, hardworking masses are still doing what they're told but they're no longer getting what they deserve. Even if you do everything you are told to do today, graduate from high school, go to college, get a degree, work hard in whatever job you can find, if you're lucky enough to find one, you're not guaranteed anything. Companies are being forced to change or die right now. Layoffs happen much more often than job openings appear and the highest paying jobs are disappearing or heading overseas at an alarming rate. If you have a job where your boss tells you exactly... I gotta go back because I believe we're missing some things. We're missing something. And I, and I don't want you to miss anything here. I gotta go back. Because it's not happening for everybody like they thought it was, but people are still doing the same things over and over and over again. Wow. Listen to this. Keep listening. Keep listening. Exactly what to do, he or she will always find masses are still doing what they're told, but they're no longer getting what they deserve. Even if you do everything you are told to do today, graduate from high school, go to college, get a degree, work hard in whatever job you can find, if you're lucky enough to find one, you're not guaranteed anything. Companies are being forced to change or die right now. Layoffs happen much more often than job openings appear, and the highest paying jobs are disappearing or heading overseas at an alarming rate. You heard that right. That's what's happening. If you can find a job in your area of expertise based on the college degree you have, you're doing great. But guess what? Those jobs are not even lasting. People are getting laid off. Companies are closing down. They're shifting their workforce overseas so that they can pay less for their workforce. And where does that leave you? Got a dream. If you have a job where your boss tells you exactly what to do, he or she will always find someone cheaper than you to do it. Did you know that the average length of a job today is about four and a half years? Contrast that to the 1960s when it was 40 years. The connected economy rewards a different group of people. It rewards the people who see things differently, who don't conform, people who have ideas that no one else has, people who are willing to work hard but know that the old way of doing things is broken. 
the connected economy rewards you not for being a cog in the wheel of life, but for standing up and reaching out. The connected economy rewards the connectors. Whether it's connecting a person to a person, a business to a business, a business to a product, or a product to a person, those who learn how to connect are the ones who will survive and excel in the connected economy. So that's it, folks. The economy has shifted. We no longer live in the industrial age. We live in the social age where the connectors are the ones that are being rewarded big. Like, you, like they said, connecting a person to a person, a company to a, a, a company, a, a product to a company, a product to a person. When you connect, you're going to be rewarded and rewarded big when you do it over and over and over again. There are models of that all over the globe. And all you've got to do is jump in. And when you jump in and do it for yourself, you will be rewarded more than you can imagine. Networking being a part of a network of people, a group of people, a team of people that come together for a single common goal, a, a common purpose. When you do that and, you're, and everyone works equally as hard to accomplish that goal for themselves and for the team, the group of people, everyone wins. That's why you've got to shift your thinking. You've got to change your actions. You've got to dream and dream big. That is how the world has changed. It's not about to change, it already has. Things are different now, and they're not going back to the way they used to be. Look at Facebook, what's their product? It's you, your network, your information, your ideas, they all have value. So look, look at Facebook, look at it. So, so we get these free Facebook accounts, right? And what do we do? We get on, we go browsing around, we, we request a person to connect with us, to be our friend, right? And so they do. And so we gather all these people. We do that over and over and over and over and over again to the extent that we have, you know, 5,000 people connected to us, that Facebook limit. And then Facebook utilizes everything that we do as a group and will send that information to merchants, excuse me, they'll sell that information to merchants, and the merchants will send you uh, particular information, advertisements, marketing materials. I'm telling you, you're already engaged in the activity, you're just not getting benefited from it. You're just not getting uh, awarded for it. They're, they're just not paying you for the activity that you're doing. So why not? Go ahead. Connect with a company, connect with a group, connect with a team that's going to engage in the same activity while you build your wealth, while you increase your savings of a real asset, while you help your family to thrive and, and do exceptionally well in this economy, in the world, for life, for the lifetime of all of your people, and help as many people as you can to do the same thing. That's what we do. And you're already doing it because you're on Facebook. Does Facebook pay you for the money they make selling your information to advertisers? No. But we still use it because we have an innate desire to connect with people. In fact, neuroscientists have found that we are actually hardwired to connect with each other. Some people know how to leverage this innate ability in today's economy. But most don't. And because they don't know how to do it, most of them are paralyzed with fear, resisting the shift, despite clear indications telling them it's time to change. Most people are paralyzed with fear, resisting the shift, in spite of all the clear indications that they need to change. And then someone comes along and gives them an invitation to watch a presentation about something that they haven't been exposed to before to make their life greater. And what is the blockage that occurs? It's that fear. It's that, it's that, that friction to change, to move forward, to do something different, to do something unknown. But you've got to move forward. You've got to go ahead and make it happen for you 
and your family. Because when you do, that's when it's going to make sense. Not only to you, but to everyone around you. And you're going to see the measurable results because you stepped out and you took the chance and you changed your life for good forever. In 1917, a group of people performed an experiment that forever changed the way that we earned a living. The world today is facing another huge problem. We're facing a shortage of our own. Not a shortage of factory workers or consumers. The world has enough of those. We have a shortage today. We have a shortage of dreamers. We have a shortage of people that have a vision, have a goal. And it's up to you to make it happen, make it come to pass. You can do it. So look, do this for yourself. Get back with the person that showed you this video. And if I was the one that uh, you connected with, go ahead and go to the link and watch the video. Watch the video presentation about what we do and how we do it. Or connect with me, contact me. Register yourself in this system. Get registered with an account and I'll contact you and we'll get started. Let's get your life on steroids so that your dreams can come true. It's time for you to live your dreams. Are you ready? Let's go.